What's going on guys? Tyler with Clean Cut Lawns. Today, coming at you with another review on the Bobcat Quick Cat. Um, if you haven't been to this channel for, before, consider hitting that subscribe button. Make sure to leave a thumbs up and a comment if you have any questions about this mower. What's up guys? Uh, Sean Kramer, Southern Appalachian Lawn Care out of Glenville, North Carolina. Um, I'll do a quick review on my Bobcat Quick Cat 61 inch mower. Um, I've had this mower for about two years now and um, it's done great so far. Usually use it in big wide open areas. Um, being in the mountains, if it gets on some unlevel ground, then it can cause a little bit of scalping. But um, I currently have 218 hours, so not all that many hours, um, but it still gets a decent amount of use. Um, it's got the Kawasaki FX730V. Which I believe is equal to about 23 and a half horsepower. Um, it doesn't seem like a lot for this size mower, but it's never bogged down or choked out on me. Um, it works great in that way. Um, let's see. This is a fixed deck as well. Um, I believe seven gauge steel, uh, somewhere around there, which I believe most mower decks are, um, so nothing can penetrate it. Um, one thing unique that a lot of stand-on mowers don't have is the ability to take off the front arm. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the mowers are fixed or welded, so that way if you do break an arm or break something right here, you can just pop these four bolts out and uh, replace anything you need to. Um, we come back here, the platform, I would give it probably a, a B to a B plus for comfort. Um, it's got these four spring-loaded pins back here, so when you step on it, they squeeze in like so. I thought that they would loosen up a little bit over time, um, but they're still pretty stiff, which is okay. It doesn't make you feel like you're going to fall through it. Um, so it's still, it's a, it's a comfortable ride, but compared to some of the other ones, there are a lot more comfortable uh, stand-on mowers out there. And then you can just flip this up like so, and then it turns it into a walk behind, although it is not very comfortable at all as a walk behind. But in case you're in a tight spot or needing to fit more mowers on the trailer, then fit that up, and then you know that'll give you uh, about six to eight inches, a little bit more clearance. Um, the tire size on this compared to others, um, these are 23, 10 and a half on 12 inch rims. I do like the size of these tires. A lot of mowers have smaller tires, but I'm up here in the mountains as well, and you, you just need a bigger tire to get more footprint on the ground. Especially when going across the slope, it's just more surface area to grab and hold on to. I have lowered the pressure in these tires. Um, I believe it comes from the factory with about 12, maybe 15 PSI. Um, but I've dropped it to, I believe, 8 or 9 PSI um, just to get that extra grip. Um, especially if it's kind of muddy like you can see on my tires, um, it grips a lot better. Um, I'll probably change out these tires. These are called the light foot, so they're really meant to not tear up grass too much. But the traction on them is not great. gallon um, but it'll easily it'll run um, a six to seven hour day before you have to fill up also on these they have a reserve tank um, I believe it's maybe a third to half a gallon um, you can do it while you're mowing if you notice it start choking out flip it over to reserve and then you know you need to get, get gas soon say you're not close to the truck that'll give you enough gas to get back to wherever you can get some gas choke lever right here it's simple to pull it up somewhat simple to push up pull down or push down um, PTO just up down throttle and then on these Bobcats they have different speed controls 
So normally when you're cutting, you just put it up into cut mode. I believe that limits you to eight and a half miles an hour. Um, and then it does something with the gearing, gives you a little bit more torque to get up steeper inclines, um, but you're not gonna go as quick. So that's right there. Say you're wanting, you don't have the blades on and you're wanting to take it back to a vehicle that's a little ways away. You push it up into transport mode and that will give you 10 and a half miles an hour. Um, you can still cut in transport mode, but it does something with the gearing and you just won't have as much torque going up a hill because it wants you to go faster. Um, and in order for the machine to run, it has to be in park um, if, you're, if you're not on the machine. This is your safety lever on this one. A lot of the other ones have it in the platform, but on the Bobcats, you have to have this down anytime it's in park or not in park. So, you know, if it was in cut mode and that was up, the mower would die. Um, so you have to put it down into park and lift it. So that is kind of a flaw to this mower. Um, I know some mowers, you just step off of the platform, even if the blades are on, it shuts the blades down, but the mower stays running. This one, if you're in cut mode and the blades are on, when you step off, the mower's going to die. Or if the blades are off still, but it's in cut mode, it's going to die. So it's just a habit you got to get used to, moving it from cut to park anytime you want to step off of the mower. It still makes it easier if you got to get out in front of you and pick something up, but just little inconveniences like that if you're used to, say, another stand on mower, which you don't have to, you just kind of got to get used to it. Um, This little pad right here, um, I'd give it probably a A minus for comfort. Um, it, it's it's pretty thick, um, and you can obviously tell where my knees are most of the time. Um, going up and down slopes, I mean it, it's comfortable. A lot of the ones have the wrap around um, to kind of keep you centered, but this one makes it nice, I guess. Uh, you don't have anything keeping you from leaning one way. And then in order to get to your battery, lift this off, then you have your battery, um, and down in there a little ways you have your hydro pumps, and your owner's manual is right here on the back of the seat. So, it, they are easy to get into all the places. And then down here, say your mower breaks down, um, and you are unable to drive it, you pull these out, lock them, and that disengages your hydraulic gearing, so then you are able to push it freely without messing anything up. Over here is the uh, height adjustment for the deck. It's just your standard pin, and then this is in transport mode up here, four and a half inches is as high it goes. Pull back, lift down, and now you're at three inches. Um, lift it back, you know, and set it three and a half, three, goes all the way down to the inch and a half. And um, they do sell, I mean, th this is easy to do. Um, there's quite a few grease fittings to keep this nice and loop, uh, looped up. Um, but, it, you know, sometimes after a long day, it does get kind of heavy because there's no spring assist. Some of the mowers have spring assist, while this you just got to use brute force to get it up needless to say. And um, yeah, other than that, the only issues I've had out of it um, was actually recently when I got a little junk in the carburetor and it would not run right if it wasn't under a load, um, which that was a Kawasaki thing, not necessarily Bobcat. Um, I found that Kawasaki engines are okay um, the older Kawasaki's, in my opinion, are better. Um, I feel like the newer ones, they're getting kind of cheap on their materials to make them. So I would probably go with a Kohler. Um, and even the newest Riggs and Stratton, um, they seem to be somewhat impressive nowadays as well. So this will probably be my last Kawasaki motor, um, but probably not my last Bobcat uh, motor. Um, it's been a great mower. I'll give you guys a little bit of a demonstration here while we have a little bit of grass to mow.
smooth operating mower. Um, I'd say this is in the middle range for stand-on mowers, price-wise and build-wise. Um, they do sell bigger motors for this size mower. Um, but for the price I got it for and the warranty, uh, six-year, 2,000-hour warranty, which is about the best in the business uh, for a stand-on mower, um, you can't really, can't really beat it. So Bobcat definitely has my approval.